Hi, I'm David Watson. Here's a quick video on using the latest version of Luminar. It's version 1.2, just came out a couple of days ago. They call it Luminar Neptune. I thought it might be helpful to show you a real quick, simple workflow I use and the kind of results I'm getting. So, took a recent trip to Iceland, fantastic, and specifically while I was there, uh, we went to the Westman Islands. Fabulous place. If you ever get to Iceland, try to take the ferry over to the Westman Islands. Fabulous. Anyway, here's a picture I like. A couple little sheep uh, standing up on a, a hilly area, a little mountain top. Let's see what we can do with that with Luminar. So we'll give it just a second to load up. These are uh, raw files, by the way. I think you get the best latitude and uh, range of edits in a raw file. But you use your judgment. Uh, use JPEGs by all means, it means if that's what you have. Uh, probably won't see huge differences, but I, I think uh, the raw files certainly give you more. Uh, this is from an X-T2, a Fuji X-T2. The raw files are pretty big. You may have similar experiences. This is a, a fairly recent iMac 27-inch. So even with a fairly decent computer, um, it'll take a moment. So here's the picture. Now, on the right side, uh, where you have your filters, if you're familiar with this, this is uh, simple stuff. I've created my own filter uh, workspace called David2. Otherwise, you might want to work in this quick and awesome. And as you add filters to a workspace, you may very well want to, I would encourage you, save it as a new workspace. I'll make another video showing how that's done. Um, and even as you work within a workspace that you've saved, in my case, I call it David2, uh, as you add other filters or maybe even change the order, Remember to come in here and click right here to refresh. And that'll say, hey, we're about to overwrite your David 2 workspace with the new filters and things you've changed. And do you want to do that? Say, sure. Okay. So anyway, here's our picture. And let's go jump right to it and see how fast we can make these edits. Uh, and then we can come back and explain a little more. One of the first things I tried to do is look for a straight horizon. I didn't get it correct here. So why don't we come over here to the uh, cropping tool and let's constrain ourselves to the original dimensions of the image. Move our cursor over here and we'll just drag it a little bit until we have a roughly straight horizon. And now we're back to our image. The new thing that came with this version is uh, called the Accent uh, AI filter and it's already a part of my workspace. I encourage you to try it out. One of the ways I try a lot of these is to uh, see, uh, see them at their extremes. Um, almost always it's bad uh, at the extremes. But it will kind of show you what we're dealing with and give you some ideas. So just for the sake of fun, let's try it at the extremes. And what does it do? And that's horrible. Way too much. One approach I use is to kind of cut that in half. If I don't like what I'm seeing, cut it in half. And that's way better, certainly. But still, to me, maybe a little much. And so cut that in half again. Now we're probably getting into a range that looks better, uh, but not cartoonish, not too much. So supposedly this AI filter goes and changes a bunch of things, uses some artificial intelligence. It looks to me like it's boosting uh, vibrance and uh, doing some things in the shadows. The mountains back here were not so visible. Uh, now they are. And by the way, to see the impact, a quick way to see the impact while you're messing with the filter is right here. Just click the little orange dot. Now it's off. Now it's on. And so you can get a sense of what we were changing, what it looks like now, and helps you know if you're really happy with it. I like to uh, uh, add a little bit of clarity. Too much is going to be a problem. Here, take a quick look. Way too much. Don't like it. Cut it in half. Still too much. Cut that in half again. Eh, we're getting somewhere. Now let's fine tune it just a bit. Uh, did it really make a difference? Well, let's turn clarity on and off again. So here we are before. Here we are after. I like that little bit of extra crispness. I might even go just a tiny bit higher. Apart from that, uh, I usually adjust some saturation or vibrance. Uh, more, sat more vibrance or more saturation is not going to help. This is pretty well saturated anyway. You might even argue it needs to go down a bit, but that's personal taste. Here we can do some things with uh, shadows, or excuse me, highlights. You might notice the clouds. Uh, now we're kind of pushing those out and blowing them up a bit, but if we bring the highlights down, you see what it does there. 
it actually improved our view of the mountain just a bit but uh, that's down too far and I'd probably leave it about where it was and you can uh, boost the shadows a bit you might notice the the, the black uh, sheep uh, the little lamb that's kind of hiding behind their sibling here we bring that shadow way up it boosts them but it's not a natural look so again in the middle is just about right I think in a real quick period of time we've got a pretty decent photo we've made some good improvements and uh, you know, will it win awards? Probably not. But if you're looking just to make your photos a little better, I think uh, it's not bad. Again, let's look one last time. Here's original. Here's what we've done. Man, not bad. The other way you may want to look at this is this split screen view. So you can sort of scroll back and forth over certain areas. Look especially here at the mountain peak. So uh, to the left before and afterwards, a better view, a little crisper. So that helps as well. The other thing you might always like to do is take a quick look at 100%. Uh, make sure you haven't introduced a ton of noise into the picture. These adjustments can do that. And by the way, you'll notice when we shift to a new area, it'll be fuzzy. And then it sharpens up just a bit. Now this area is out of focus anyway. Let's go back to the sheep. Fuzzy. And then it'll sharpen up. And that's just part of the process. So don't be too concerned. I think that's it for now. Hope that gives you a real quick, simple a view of some edits. Uh, again, this is the Luminar version 1.20, uh, the Neptune release, and uh, having good luck so far with the Accent AI filter. Hope that helps a bit. I'm David Watts. Check back. Uh, click like if you enjoy it. Click subscribe. I'll try to make some more. Have a good day. Take care.